You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 11th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where the state is officially reopened as of today, cornfields and all, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Thank you, Governor Pritzker, and everybody who got, got their, their shot in got Illinois. Their shots. Yeah, we're open. We're open for business. Yeah, uh, of all the states in the Midwest, we are number one in terms of second shots, in terms of first shots, and uh, that's great news. Come visit beautiful Illinois. Come pretty visit soon, Illinois. Pretty soon, <laughs> Just all make sure of you're your... fully vaccinated. Yeah, well, that's right. We 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 do have a wall, a small one around the state. It's actually it's more of a corn maze. You know, you walk in one end, you, you walk out walk the other. Through the corn maze, and in in the middle of the corn maze is JB Pritzker with huh. a immunization for you. Here, yes. here's a ticket to Six Flags and a shot. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And uh, sadly, this will probably become a a medical tourist destination for women's health care if yeah the rest of the midwest continues to slag back into the you know 14th century but right you know this is what happens when you don't elect democrats they drag yeah. you into the stone age and mm-hmm. make you and pretend that you like it so there's that anyway it's great here it's it they put the broiler on high so it's like 90 plus here and the yeah it's high yeah, we have a thing here called a heat index uh, which is what happens when you have two, when you have two hundred percent humidity, you can actually put water, a glass of water, on the air, and it just stays there. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's like a hundred something right outside, which we're not. So you know, bully for us. But um, there's this anxiousness that you don't just feel. I, I I am on a bunch of committees that you can sense and you can see. People are like. Let's get the summer going now, right now. Mm-hmm. Let's. Did you go to this thing? Did you go to that thing? And everyone is. There's kind of like a rush for the door the other way. Uh-huh. Which is everyone's planning their festivals and planning their food truck events and planning their concerts and planning their outdoor. And they're all sort of colliding with each other because there's only a certain number of days or evenings when you can do that stuff. Yeah, right. Everybody but, wants Thursday night. I right. mean, because that's what you want. You want weekend eve mm-hmm. for your food truck, summer concert, because people take Friday off yeah. anyway. So, so I found myself working, like, as you know, last Sunday night until late. I thought off-site. you were going to be gone for an hour and you were gone for four and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. No. I'm, <laughs> and it's it's cool and fun. And um, it was it's a writing project, but it's not really a writing writing project. It's a it's a community development plan project that needs to be thought through and written out and so forth. And and, and you've got to be able to market it to a wide variety of people. Yes. And so, and, first... and and one of them is the mayor, and he's not going to be the kind of guy you're going to talk to like you talk to a bunch of tourists coming no, to town. No, no. Well, his attention span is about a minute. So, <laughs> you know, the, the first three slides are amazing. Uh, mm-hmm, but it's, mm-hmm. it's a typical, it was a typical kind of like, I'm sure if you all out there have been in the world of work for any length of time, a three-hour meeting where the first hour is like, what the hell are we doing here? Why are mm-hmm. we here? Why is anyone here? Why do we exist on this planet? And you sort of narrow it down to the thing you want to actually do, and then you work out the method for constructing it, and then you actually kick into work, and it it, it went very quickly. Um, but it was nice. It was weird to be able to say I really enjoyed <laughs> having a Sunday night writing project. Yeah, because with other people, I, with other with people, other people face to face. Yeah, yeah. who are nice yeah. people and and deeply involved. And people want to do what's right for the city of Springfield. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Anyway, we're wide open now. Visit us. Come, come on down. Um, Chicago is going to be, you know, a zoo for the next three months, which is great. Um, and we've got Lincoln down here. You can do. see lots of Lincoln things. And oh, we have the. Uh, we're going to have a copy. I think one of the original copies of the Emancipation Proclamation on display at the great. Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library, um, which is awesome. I might go over there and. It, being a typical resident of a place, I don't ever go to the touristy things of right. the place. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I not since I was 12 that I go to the tomb and rub Lincoln's nose. 
Um, yeah, I have. I haven't been there yet. I yeah. have. I moved here in two thousand eight. I haven't been inside the Lincoln Library, and I have not been to the Frank Lloyd Wright House. And those oh. are the three things that are you everybody is that. supposed to do. And, yeah. and I've been in the Frank Lloyd Wright House like a dozen times because we held meetings in there. Mm -hmm. So you know, mm -hmm. the one of the but the him, tour, even though the house is not that big, uh -huh. the tour is really long because they go in great detail into it Frank is. Lloyd Wright stuff. I can tell you this, yeah. Um, as a giant, freakishly tall human being, yes, uh, that house <laughs> you was. You don't fit in that building. No, that house was built to decapitate someone like me. Yes, right. Um, right. I had to be very careful in the long, narrow, really cool, well-designed, Art Deco-ish looking um, table we sat at with mm -hmm. the really cool chairs. Because mm -hmm. if I sat under any of the hanging lamps, they were like suspended five and a half feet off the floor. And either would, you or the lamp was going to yeah, break. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> yes. The lamp is way more expensive than me. Way more, so, a lot more than your head. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we want to get into the news pretty quickly. Yeah. Because uh, some horrible things have been happening. Uh, the Trump administration has was found to be spying on Congress. That's the way I put it. Yeah. This is as bad as anything Nixon did times three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it, John Mitchell... You know, went to jail for stuff that for that, nineteen the, months for that's this. It's a rounding yeah. error compared to what Bill Barr was doing, just as his job, just as mm -hmm. his normal flunky hack um, um, lawyer for a mob a mob president. Um, and it's all on. It's all recorded. It's all available to you know at the fingertips of lawyers who investigate. This is not a big secret. There's no like little fraction well, of a piece it of was, tape. A Apple was not allowed to. Right. They were under a gag order. Right. Until that's why we found out about it this week is uh -huh. because Apple was under a gag order until yesterday, I guess. Yeah. When they were told you can talk now by the same Justice Department and they talked. And but it, it's not like you had to find a secret tape recording. No, this was all no. done. And this is what this is what this reminds me of. Really, I, I was thinking about this just the other day um, while I was pretending to write at a writer's project. I was thinking about this other thing, which was. This reminds me in a weird way of the Bush administration in which the Bush administration wanted to do some shit that was flagrantly illegal, torturing people, black bagging people, bugging Americans without a warrant, throwing mm -hmm. people in jail for an infinite length of time with no warrant and no paperwork is all flagrantly illegal and mm -hmm. against American values. And it's just something we don't do. And George Bush said repeatedly, we don't torture people. That's not something we do. And when in fact, that's what he was doing. So they went out lawyer shopping. And right. let's find an asshole named John Yu who will write a paper saying that it's okay to torture people and then make sure he has a job for life at a law school because, you know, that you got to pay the guy off. And then if and when we get caught, we can say, well, the lawyer said it was okay. Same thing here. Trump went shopping for the most despicable, hateful, lunatic, sadistic assholes he could find, plug them into government positions, and then said, well, you know, the attorney general said it was okay. You know, Stephen Miller said it was okay. All these yeah. people who have yeah. titles that you refer to when you try to find out something's legal or not said mm -hmm. it was okay. So I didn't know any better. And it is time for the whole rat's nest to be swept out into the Potomac River. Is <laughs> there <laughs> just or at least into a prison? <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, let's let's say that the raft, the super criminal prison from the Marvel universe, is in the Potomac River. Let's just pretend that's true. They should I just go feel there. Like I have to, I have to interrupt everything here for a minute sure. because. I'm burned out by all of this. Me and I'm too. burned out by living in an unjust world. It in yeah. a just world, these guys would be in prison. Yeah. And they would get out of prison and they would go into private life and not have a lucrative job waiting for them at Newsmax or Fox. Yeah. And and we are living in a world where a third of this country is brainwashed by right wing media. And therefore, mm. There's lucrative jobs waiting for anybody that does this. Yes, there are. And I just, part of it is all of that, just being burnt out by the injustice of everything. And part of it is that my dad's been sick this week. And yeah. Yeah. he had surgery yet last week. He's 85. He does, the. New, I always brag, he does the New York Times crossword puzzle in ink every day. He's very sharp. Mm -hmm. But he's had a really rough week. And... uh in part, that is simply because he's 85, and in part, it's because the medical community in which he is 
operating is not treating him right. Mm -hmm. His my sister took him to his pre-surgery meeting with his doctor, and his doctor talked to my sister the whole time as if he wasn't there, mm -hmm. as if he was a pet. <laughs> and it, and I mean, and part of that is him being eighty-five, and they just think, well, he's not copus mentis, right? He's not mm -hmm. able to make decisions. You obviously drove him here, but. My dad's very sharp, and and then, you know, the situation, the surgery uh, had complications and pain, and he had to go to the ER, and, you know, it's a long story that I didn't get into all of it, but um, that has been weighing on me. Mm -hmm. And you and I, Drift Glass, have, for the almost the entirety of the pandemic, yes, been getting up in the morning and watching Morning Prayer. Yes. Uh, from Canterbury Cathedral. And yes, I have. wanted to bring that up because uh, this week is the one year anniversary <laughs> of the viral cat yes. who appeared uh, at that's right. the YouTube channel of Canterbury Cathedral. And mm -hmm. this was not something that was planned by Canterbury Cathedral. No. That this um, cat named Tiger, who is one of the cathedral cats, would jump up on the the it's the dean who does this little service this in, out, in, in, in the great service. outdoors yeah he does it out in the garden mm -hmm. right and he reads he reads the morning prayer office and then he does a little prayer and a little thing about on this day in history and then you're done and you're done with church for the day in 20 right. minutes that's kind of how we look at it mm -hmm. um and so but here's tiger and tiger jumps up on the table and you probably remember this if you were paying attention at the time he Tiger the cat dipped his paw in the Dean's milk for his tea mm -hmm. and licked it off and repeatedly drank the milk mm, from the, is, the cream from the de Dean's tea. This is delicious. Yes. This is delicious. This is mine. I'm going to mm -hmm. do this. And uh, Tiger became uh, really an international sensation because yes. it was funny and it was the beginning of lockdown and it was tough times and we didn't know what was going to happen. And here is this funny thing that happened with the cat during a religious service. And mm -hmm. then later on, there was that one of the other cathedral cats, Leo walked under the Dean's uh, Cossack yeah. <laughs> and just decided to park there. Well, and there was and, a whole, whole YouTube thing where, and then you show uh, an entire disco full of cats having a party. Right. Know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Inside there. Right. And so anyway, but, but it was, Interesting this week to be reminded, oh, it's been a year mm -hmm. since we saw Tiger drink the milk. Mm -hmm. And that's when it caught our attention that this YouTube channel existed and we started watching and it was a lovely way to start the day. Mm -hmm. And so this week I was just feeling like a sense of utter burnout over the news. Just yep. I don't want to deal with these assholes anymore. Yep. <laughs> they all need to go to jail you know, and I got really upset one evening, not because, I mean, yes, I was hearing a lot of news, but my thinking was going to, okay, which buildings do I personally have to blow up to get get these roadblocks out of the way right. <laughs> from right. what I want to see happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because minority rule seems to be the way things are going in this country right now. And that yeah. is just incredibly unfair and frustrating. Well, and, and if I, I just want to interrupt for a second to say, since we were talking about Nixon and John Mitchell and mm -hmm. prison for people. Yeah. Th at least the reaction when it came out that Nixon was doing mm -hmm. illegal shit, spying on people, terrorizing right. them, bribing people. The reaction was, holy shit, how the hell did that happen? And let's let's get these assholes out of government and let's get these assholes off the stage. Now, granted, and, that, and Republicans were horrified. Yeah. There were there were a critical mass of Republicans in Congress who said, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And granted, there's, you know, if you listen to the Rachel Maddow podcast, um, there's a there's a hardcore who just thinks think Nixon should have burned the tapes. Right. They will always be with us. Those are just that's the Republican Party. That's the bottom tier mm -hmm. of the GOP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's just, well, you know. The reaction is, well, we expect these are Republicans. This is mm -hmm. how they are. This is what they do. There's nothing can be done about it. Mitch McConnell. And they're bulletproof. I, I mean, bulletproof. I don't mean that in a threatening anyone's life. No, no, life. you mean I they're mean invulnerable. In a sense like bulletproof coffee. There's, <laughs> there, like... 
There's nothing that can be done about it. There's there. nothing you're going to be able to no. do to so, fix this. So rather than, because it is immutable that the Republican Party is a is a monster factory, a shit pile mm-hmm. of racists and imbeciles, and that can never change. All of everyone's attention is focused on, well, how do we fix the corner of the Democratic Party that isn't doing what it should do? Mm-hmm. Because nothing else is fixable. Let's all mm-hmm. gang up on Joe Manchin. I'm all for ganging up on Joe Manchin. But it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. But you you realize the reason everyone's pissed at Joe Manchin is because the entire Republican Party is a team, is a teeming shithole of traitors and, it's and easier monsters. to focus on Joe Manchin than yeah. on 50 Republicans. Right. Yeah. I want to get back to my yes. finish Please. up my story of, Please do. of Tiger. Tiger. Um <laughs> Tiger, who is one leg short from the yeah. beginning of the, of this pandemic to the end. He he got cancer in his paw and had to have an amputation. And you know, today mm-hmm. he was drinking milk out of the yes, he was the uh, pitcher because he can balance on his back legs and dip his paw in the milk just as he we did and, before and jump up on a table. No and trouble jump at all. up on the table. And he's doing just fine. Mm-hmm. Um. But what happened this week when I reached that level, and I I know to watch my own thinking, and I don't like myself when I start thinking about blowing up buildings or, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> what do I have to set fire to to make progress in America? That's not the way I like to think. And I know that's human will, and it's wrong, and it's just, it's not, it's, it's not um, constructive. Right. And I want to be constructive. Right. But and I don't know which day it was, but at the end of every single morning prayer, Dean Roberts says the benediction, and I have heard the benediction in, in this year three hundred and sixty-five yeah, times. Yeah. You ne- you and I never missed a day. I don't yeah. think. Well, uh, sometimes I have early morning meetings. Yeah, but yeah. we've we've kept up. You know, hundreds and hundreds of times this year we've heard this benediction. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, this week when I heard it, it was like hearing it for the first time. It was just a a sword into my heart. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's very simple. It just says, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, and that's also from Philippians 4, yeah. 7. I mean, that's what Paul says at the end of one of his letters. Uh, you know, so it is biblical. It's also in the book of common prayer, but I just, and I'm not saying that to proselytize. I'm just saying, find, if you can find some sort of source of peace, because you're going to need it over the next rest of your life, but certainly years. within yeah. the next two years, you're going to yeah, need it. Absolutely. And the other thing I always say about, you know, before elections, chop wood, carry water mm-hmm. and after elections, chop wood, carry water. Mm hmm. It now is the time to figure out what that means to you. Yes, exactly. What is chopping wood and carrying water going to be for you for the midterms? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be postcards to voters, phone calls, finding one candidate that you're going to contribute financially to or Mm -hmm. multiple candidates? Or are you going to, how are you going to work? How I've are got you a few get... avenues that I'm going to work on, and I know Drift Glass is working on community development too, and and in addition to politics. How are you going to get people to the polls? How are you going to get people, to the, people to the polls? Yeah, to vote these people out of office. Yep. Um, and yeah, the the, the um, that that particular benediction doesn't promise any solutions no. to the world's problems. That's a nope. whole that's a whole different category of no. discussion. But it, it is, also ends with you know. Uh, the blessing of God be upon those whom you love and those who you would pray for. And that was also very yeah. calming for me, for my dad, yeah. just that I needed to rec- recognize that. And, and uh, you know, we always say, too, that you know, this the purpose of me saying all of that is not to proselytize. I don't believe in converting anyone to anything. I just right. don't. I, in fact, I think that's very much against my religion because um, I think, that my higher power may have different plans for you that might include atheism. And that's mm-hmm. great. That's fine. Um, I, so, I, but I wanted to share that just because I think I'm not, I know I'm not alone with the level oh, of frustration no. I've no, been no. feeling this week. Well, and I'd like yeah. to, I would like to raise a not, I'd like to avoid spoiling something, anything for anyone 
mm-hmm. because there's a number of television programs and radio programs and podcasts, which are glorious and wonderful. No one should spoil them for you. I will only mention that in one, there is a speech by a character to a bunch of bereaved people. Hmm. And it's in response to the person running the um, ceremony, not understanding what these people are going through Mm, and standing up and saying, you can't just ask people to be, you know, spontaneous speech, speak spontaneously. You have to warm them up. These people, and this is the part that resonated with me so strongly. These people are exhausted. Mm -hmm. These people Mm -hmm. are tired. They don't have, they, they don't, you can't do this to them. Mm -hmm. Instead, Mm -hmm. ask them questions, solicit information from them. And that part really rang true because everyone I know is exhausted. Yeah. Is exhausted. It's like we fought all the way up. And I I don't mean to take anything away from the heroes of D-Day. We have fought all the way up the beach. And now is the battle over? Oh, no, no. We're just at the hedgerows in France. Uh (laughs) You know, Uh we we just made it past the first line of defense. And now the people who are trying to wreck this country are regrouping and and massing and and very carefully using every tool available to them to uh, burn everything in their path as they retreat. And they're desperately searching for brainwashing tools. Yes. Because woke didn't work hard enough. And no. so critical race theory is working. Let's, let's and these it. are the tools of white nationalism. It is. They are. And that's what they are. And and what's different than, again, the Nixon area is that everyone's cards are face up now. Yeah. These are people, you know, when, when Mitch McConnell says, you know, the era of bipartisanship is over, he's smirking. Yeah. He's, that's him. She's a camera. Yeah. That's his, that's his way of saying, fuck you all. I can mm-hmm. lie my ass off. Not one goddamn reporter among you has the balls to call me on it. Mm-hmm. My party ain't going to do shit. And I have all the power here because I can stop anything because Joe Manchin is shitting himself at the thought of voting against anything or voting for anything that 10 other Republicans, which I know all of them and they're all traitors, um, will ever vote for. So he's mm-hmm. he's in my pocket. So I can sit up here and say whatever the fuck I want. And my party will do nothing about it. And you can't do anything about it because we have these rules. And rather than slightly modify the rules to make it possible to do good things, which Mitch McConnell himself did when it came to ramming through Supreme Court justices, I can just flip over. And the press corps just sort of shrugs and says, well, not just Supreme Court justices. Yeah, no, but all judges, all judges. But it was no, we're not going to have we're we're not going to have 60 votes for Supreme Court. We're we're going to ram through. Everything I want, I'm I'm going to undo the filibuster. Everything I want will be at a fifty vote threshold, right. and, and, and and anything and do, you want will will never happen. Not yeah. a not a second thought about it. And then when it came, to, and this has been true of the GOP uh, in increasingly obvious ways my entire adult life. Mm-hmm. The entire Clinton administration was devoted yep. to hunting Bill Clinton like a wild animal because he was not legitimate. He was immoral. He was a monster. And that election doesn't fucking count. And right. then when an actual immoral man. George W. Bush actually did steal an election and actually did fuck the country over and actually did run up deficits and actually did destroy the U.S. military and actually did lie us into a war. The same people were like, well, who the fuck cares? And and Dick Cheney's response to panic over, didn't we just say the deficits are terrible? Didn't we just tell Bill Clinton that you 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 don't get anything until you pay off our deficit? His response was, hey, Reagan taught us deficits don't matter. We know this is bullshit. The people in charge of the Republican Party are not naive. They're criminals. They're Mm -hmm. traitors. They know exactly what they are doing. The people who are I'm afraid of are the 74 million brainwashed meatheads who don't know or don't care, who Mm -hmm. think that what they're doing is somehow fighting for liberty and patriotism, just like those good Germans did, I'm sure, when they were pointing guns at our troops on on, uh, Normandy Beach. They're fighting to defend their home country. So it is up to us to acknowledge the fact that we are fucking tired of this Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that every hill, there's another hill, you know, there's, there's the, uh, there's the story of the explorers who reach the Rocky mountains and they get over the first range and look and like, holy shit, there's 150 more miles of mountains beyond this thing. And yeah, that's, that's the deal. And other than the fact that there are more of us than there are of them. And we are on the right side of history. And we can proceed with confidence that what we are doing is right 
and just, and we are on the side of the angels, even though we occasionally make mistakes, sometimes big mistakes. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have each other. Yes. Yes. Um, that's, that is incredibly reassuring to me because if we didn't, if that, none of that were true, then I would just give up all of this and go, you know, work as a Walmart greeter because nothing matters, but right. things actually do matter. And I'm also grateful for a couple other things. One thing I'm really grateful for is that Democratic turnout in the Virginia primary this week was massive. It was as big as they had in 2017, which was a record. Mm-hmm. Um, and one Democratic congressional staffer said, yeah, you can put those questions about Democratic enthusiasm <laughs> to bed. Yeah. <laughs> so Terry McAuliffe, who, you know, I have a few problems with, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think he'll do fine as governor of Virginia in terms of uh, keeping Medicare, ex- Medicaid expanded. Yeah. And et cetera. Um, listen to the science and so forth. He won the nomination with at least 301,811 votes. That's how many votes he got in the primary. The person who's going to be his Republican opponent in the general election, Glenn Youngkin, won his party's nomination, and he had 10,318 votes. Man. So you're talking about 30 (laughs) times the number of votes. Uh, and so, yeah, I think Terry Cut McAuliffe is likely to be the next governor of Virginia. So I don't know. Maybe just, don't, maybe Republicans any, just waiting to pounce. I don't know. Yeah. You know, just, and now it's a general election, so it's different, yeah, but, yeah. uh, that's, that, well, that's great news. But there I mean, was how, enthusiasms. That's the point. Right. There was enthusiasms. The other, uh, news that made me happy this week, mm-hmm. m- going backwards in our notes, <laughs> sorry about that, um, Lauren Boebert's uh, voters are uh, fed up with her after six months, Driftglass. Oh, no. She's not this mouthy enough? Report. No, this is a report in Politico that interview- actually went out and interviewed some, you know, non-Trumper voters to talk to them about what they want. And you know what they want, Driftglass? They want an infrastructure bill. Really? Yeah. In, in the great state of Colorado? They, they, they need things talked, built? They actually talked to people in uh, Pueblo, Colorado, which has, uh, they call it Steel Town. There's there's a steel mill there, and there's steel generated from that area. Mm-hmm. And it is steel that will be used if and when the infrastructure bill that Biden has put forward passes, which includes expansion of Amtrak. I see. Uh, expanding Amtrak will require the use of the steel for its tracks. And so the people that are involved with the, and working for that steel plant would really, really, really like the Amtrak portion of the <laughs> infrastructure bill to pass because that's really money in their pockets. Directly, so, like, oh, we'll get this. If this passes, we'll have money. So when Lauren Boebert says, stop the steal. When she takes a cardboard cutout of Kamala Harris to the border with a camera crew mm-hmm. and starts wailing about giving children to the cartel... <laughs> The cartel is the new Benghazi. It no. just is. And so when, so when she says stop the steel, mm-hmm. she means stop the steel plant, stop the stop steel job. Stop the steel job. plant from actually having any jobs well, in my go, district. Everyone loves a congressperson who works overtime to get rid of jobs in their area. Right. That's just, that's just a fact of life. And also doesn't return phone calls and blocks constituents who don't like her. And Lauren Boebert also doesn't seem to have much interest in uh, constituent services. No legislation that might create jobs in her district. And uh, she'll find a reason to vote the way House leadership tells her to vote because yeah. she's not very smart. And I hate saying that because I'm not the smartest person in the universe. In fact, Drift Glass and I were very happy to meet one of our listeners this week uh-huh. who I think is smarter than both of us. Yeah. Well, based on <laughs> what he said and what he does for a living and his his choice of spouse and what she does for a living. I would say that's probably true, Blue yeah, Gal. Yeah, but we mm-hmm. were very uh, pleased to meet one of our listeners for coffee, and we're mm-hmm. always happy to do that if you're swinging through Springfield. Sure. Uh, hit us up. Um, Tom Cotton. Yeah. You want to talk to about this, yeah. brilliant, this brilliant person, no, Tom Cotton, who's got a good education. He's, he's not unintelligent. He simply knows his party. Yeah. And he knows that there is a 
this has been and this has been going on for decades. This has been going on since Rush Limbaugh, you know, started mm-hmm. calling people feminazis and libtards and and you know, there was a whole let's call them socialist. What does that mean? We don't know, but we know it's bad, so we'll call mm-hmm. them that and that's what they'll be. And so and there's now a small grab bag of terms that they just grab out at random and slap on the wall and call Democrats that and blame everything on that because, and this actually goes directly to Lauren Boebert and her voters. Um, I had a a sort of an online interaction with uh, someone today who was talking about Louis Gohmert and good God, this, this person, Louis Gohmert. And my comment was now take Louis Gohmert. Now imagine someone who will go and vote for Louis Gohmert. Mm Mm-hmm. Or vote for Lauren Boebert or Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, Tom Cotton has a clear and precise understanding of his own party. He's not stupid. He's very smart. He's he's very well educated. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he knows exactly who the base of his party really is. And what he knows for sure is that no matter how awful the Republican party fucks up no matter how many times they screw over their own voters, no matter how many steel jobs they lose because Lauren Boebert's a lunatic, no matter what happens, fire, flood, it doesn't matter. They can always blame liberals. Always. That's their, that's their magic trick, which is they have an Emmanuel Goldstein built into their ideology, which is Mm -hmm. however badly things fuck up. It's always Obama's fault. It's always Mm -hmm. Biden's fault. It's always Clinton's fault. And and trying to reason with him is like trying to reason with a house fly. It doesn't work. So knowing this, Tom Cotton just goes to the little bag of buzzwords that they're issued every week by Fox News and hate radio. So this week, Tom Cotton explained that racism and sexism did not exist in the military before Joe Biden was elected. And it was, <laughs> and it was because this is a shock to basically every sentient being in the United States who was like, what did he just say? No, no, there was no racism or sexism in the military before Joe Biden. And now I'm quoting Mr. Tom Cotton, the growing mistrust between the racists and sexes where none existed just six months ago. Now that's, that's amazing enough, right? That's astonishing. Mm-hmm. This, but what caused this horrible rift, the sudden and unbreachable rift on race and sex? It was critical race theory. Not a single of these 74 million meatheads knows what the fuck that even is, but they know it's bad. And they know it's bad because they've heard Tucker Carl say a million times that every problem in their life is caused by critical race theory. Used to be Benghazi, used to be Hunter Biden's laptop, used to be Hillary's emails, used to be- Solyndra. Solyndra. Could have been uh, been Grey Poupon. I don't know. Could have been Clinton. (laughs) Could have been sex scandals. Could have been the MENA airport. The point being- there is just a point, a, a part of the Republican brain where if you just push it, it resets everything. They forget everything and they know that the new word that are supposed to run around yapping about. And you know this is happening when you go down to your grocery store and you run into one of your meathead local Republicans in his overalls and his dirty T-shirt. And he's got a lot of opinions about critical race theory and how it's <laughs> screwing up America. And you're just like, wow, it just they really do just take a shit in your skull every night, don't they? And it comes out your mouth every day. And, uh, you know, I have I am now spared the responsibility of caring about anything having to do with you. Anything you say, everything you say is polluted and dumb. You're, you're, you're just not worth my attention. I don't think of you as a sentient grown-up human being anymore. I think of you as a reprogrammable meatbag because that's how you keep behaving. Now, on the other side, there's Charlie Kirk, who really is an idiot. <laughs> A real, he, he is the GOP base. Tom Cotton knows what he has to say to the GOP base to become president or whatever. Charlie Kirk is that base. And Charlie Kirk said that using the word equity in a curriculum is absolute proof that critical race theory is right there and you can just smell it. Equity. Equity. Yeah. Now, my question was, <laughs> Charlie Kirk is a wealthy young man. Uh, who's, a, I believe, a, a college dropout and, uh, again, an idiot, a big, dumb, white, racist idiot. But he makes a lot of money with his, t- his Turning Point USA mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Tom, he's never missed a chance to screw everything up. His, his press conferences are an embarrassment. The lies he tells always fall apart. Doesn't matter. But my question is, the house he bought for himself with the money that idiots give him, does he have equity in that house Equity. Now? Uh-oh. And, 
is critical he living, race theory is critical, in the house. It is the roof under which he lives. <laughs> So I don't know if I can trust Charlie Kirk because he seems to be one of those uh, critical race people because he said the word equity. It's probably in his mortgage. I know. That's true. That's Um, true. But those are the two moving parts of the GOP. There are the people who are the beasts of burden, the the brute beasts who do all the hauling and lifting and be told anything and Mm -hmm. believe it. And then the people who ride them like the beasts of burden that they are, the Tom Cottons who just say, yeah, critical race theory. Let's go over here. Let's go over there. And there is no force on earth inside the GOP that will stop them. Right. They, are, they, they are just an implacable, detrimental, treasonous, lunatic force that has been building in this country for decades. And now well, they are and here. And there is a reward for being either one of those. Oh, the yeah, reward, yeah. if you are riding them, is you get power and money. And if you are that beast of burden, you get to own the libs. Sure. And sure. and then there's Marsha Blackburn, who <laughs> basically yeah. tell does what Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell tell her to say. Mm-hmm. And uh, she decided to tweet this week that while Americans suffered, Fauci wrote a book. Mm-hmm. And uh, everyone to the left of us and, and our gang... Uh, Reminded her that it actually she wrote a book last year and yeah. she was on The View talking about her book in November. And Fauci did not write a book. Fauci, uh, his the book about Fauci or that had words from Fauci in it, was compiled from interviews Fauci gave in connection with a forthcoming documentary film, as pointed out by No More Mr. Nice Blog. Oh, so he's a Holly weird liberal is what you're uh-huh. saying. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But uh, Marsha Blackburn pays no price for that. No, of course not. Because she's immune and her audience, the audience for that tweet had no interest in anything, as you said, past. Dr. Fauci wrote a book, you see, so he's a bad person. And if I go to the store tomorrow to pick mm-hmm. up a dozen eggs because Junior Dude has burned through the eggs again <laughs> and and... I don't know, pizza or something and a few odds and ends. If I run into the the guy in his long underwear with his dirty T-shirt, he's going to say, Fauci wrote a book. You know he wrote a book instead of taking care of Americans. <laughs> and, and that's why, again, it, it just, I can see it happening. And the this name is, of that man is Mike Pompeo. Yeah, yes. Well, Mike Pompeo, <laughs> Mike Pompeo is the lexographer of the, he, he really is, is the catalogueur. His Twitter stream has all, it's all, as much jello as he can throw at the wall yeah. to see what will stick. And really, it's, it is a useful lexography of right-wing mm-hmm. brainwashing words yeah. at Mike Pompeo's Twitter stream. We've got critical race theory. You've got woke, 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 woke. And it goes on and on and on. Fauci, Fauci. Yes. Mm-hmm. And China. Don't forget. China. China. We deserve China. answers from China. Mm-hmm. We deserve answers. Well, I don't know if you remember in Hot Fuzz, um, one of the characters, uh, Mr. Frost, Nick Frost, says, is there a place in the human brain where if, it, if you shoot it, it, your head will explode? And the answer is no. But there is a place in the Republican brain where if you if you plug a word in, it will erase everything they have learned up until that moment. AOC, Nancy yeah, Pelosi. AOC, AOC, oh my God. And and it is it is so open now. As I said, all the cards are being played up, played face up. They're not, mm-hmm. they're not pretending that their base is anything other than are, than are mindless pack mules while hauling around their stupid agenda. They're not pretending they care about democracy anymore. They but don't I think care about- this is why we need humor writers. Yes, we do. On our side. Desperately. And we need to make this political battle we have as fun as possible. Well, it's hard to get- With as much ridicule- and joking as possible, that they are absurd, that our opponents are absurd. Did you know that uh, apparently a, actually, actually, a cicada landed on Biden's collar in, on his trip, while he was on his trip? You mean the, the secret microphone that was planted there by? Well, just so you know, cicadas are uh, hibernate for 17 years mm-hmm. and the 17th letter of the alphabet is Q and landing on the collar means a message. And so it's actually all from Q. That whole event has, has is a message from Q. The cicada if, on Biden's collar at the airport 
et cetera, is all well, a message from Q. Now. First of all, I don't know where you were raised, but where I was raised, they're called cicadas. Oh, cicadas. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. You were raised in a far off land. I was raised taught... in Ohio. We called them cicadas. And you, and you were taught critical race theory as a child. Critical race and, theory. And no, you were I like a, a communist sleeper cell no. uh, for America. <laughs> Secondly, if I may quote from Voltaire just this once. I have never made but one prayer to God, a very short one. Oh, Lord, make my enemies ridiculous, and God granted it. Yep, exactly. And they are ridiculous. I mean, it's hard to get... these prayers are going to be lit, and everyone is going to have oh. to answer for, do you think cicadas, or how do you pronounce it, cicadas, or do mm -hmm. you pronounce it cicadas? Are they a message from Q or not? Because mean, where we go one, we go all. You mean q -cadas? You mean q, q mm -hmm. The q mm -hmm. and, and, you know, are they related to Al-Qaeda? Well... As, as much, <laughs> as much, yes, as, and as much as it pains me, uh, as much as I agree that, you know, we need uh, phalanxes of comedy writers and funny people and clever people. It's hard to get ahead of Louis Gohmert on that curve. It is. It's very he, hard to get ahead of what planet does he live on? As I asked him, he, he lives, he lives week. here, you know, him and Bill, Bill O'Reilly, you know, tide goes in, tide goes out. Nobody knows how that works. Hey, that's Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. And at that point he should have been laughed off. But it took, you know, multiple sex scandals and enormous payouts. Well, he's back Fox on the News. stage with Donald Trump later yes, this is. year. Yes, he is. Because they always come back. Like cicadas, they always <laughs> come back. They hibernate for a little while and they come out and they go, oh, hey, whatever happened to that guy? Because that part in the soft Republican skull um, just disappears, that knowledge. What Bill O'Reilly did, they, they just know that they like him. They have the sort of the central nervous system response. The, the solar plexus response to Bill O'Reilly is, ooh, 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 friend friend and they just forget everything else uh, and and they have been trained to look at anything on the left of anything look at anything involving any democrat anywhere because all democrats are illegitimate all all democrats have stolen every election since clinton and think enemy and that's it's really as rudimentary and 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 animalistic as that they just friend enemy and enemy bad and enemy critical race theory and tomorrow will be something else It'll be, mm -hmm. Like you said, it'll be woke. It, it'll be AOC. It'll be gravitation. I don't know. It, it, cicadas. Who the fuck knows? But on the right, the people riding the beast are just dreaming up new th shit to tell the morons because they got to be fed every day. <laughs> and eventually they get tired of saying critical race theory because that's a lot of words. Yeah, so it gonna, is. Right. You have to shrink it down to something. I thought they were mad about uh, cathode ray tubes for a long time, but it turned out, no, that it's a different CRT they're mad about. Um Shall we move on to the Department of Justice? Sure, because they they woke up today and decided to do a couple things. Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz announced that his office is now initiating an inquiry into the Trump Department of Justice use of subpoenas to obtain communication records of House Dems and their families, including minor children. Yeah. Yep. Uh, again, as we said at the top of the show, this is 12 Watergates. Yeah, they were running a police state. They were running mm -hmm. a police state and they were, you know, if Trump had been reelected, all of this shit would have come out in the open because there'd be no stopping it. There'd be, there'd be show trials of their enemies. There, you know, Eric Swalwell would be up behind bars right now. I, I, this is how this thing's happened. And the fact that Trump didn't get reelected is what forestalled this, but they're hell bent on doing this uh, because this is how all authoritarian states look. They look exactly like this. And occasionally they're interrupted and things happen and, and the pooch didn't go as planned, but they're not giving up on this. This is, we are in much worse shape today than we were on January 6th. Um, and that's terrifying to me. That is exhausting to me, but it, it's also part of the fight and it's the fight that we have to win. Um, Merrick Garland, bless his heart, said the civil rights division is going to need a lot more lawyers mm -hmm. <laughs> announcing he will double it in 30 days and vigorously use existing laws, including the Voting Rights Act, the Motor Voter Act, and the Help America Vote Act, and more aggressively protect the right to vote. That's a good thing. Yeah. I, I still don't know what nine-level chess he's playing with the Trump rape case, though, I, and the defamation case with E. Jean Carroll. I don't get that. Well, uh, as we said, we he's not a liberal firebrand. He's not a liberal. No, no. He's, he's a centrist tapioca everyone can agree he's a competent guy um compromised candidate left over from the obama administration right right and that's about all that they were going to get 
Hey, Drift um, let's do a news roundup. All right. After you, Blue Gal. This week, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. There's another source for your uh, <laughs> Republican code words. Yeah. Uh, celebrated the suspension of Rebecca Jones from Twitter shortly after signing social media deplatforming law that gives every Floridian the power to fight back against deplatforming and allows any person to sue big tech companies for up to $100,000 in damages. Yeah. Our, uh, our, our coffee guest this week, we had a, mm-hmm. a listener come in and have a little coffee with us, pointed out that this, this bill, the wording of this bill, is the very definition of Orwellian. Yeah. It yeah. is writing into law that basically you can't criticize me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and enforcing that in the name of freedom of expression. Right. Um, which is, you know, welcome to Florida. Uh, speaking of things that keep coming back, no matter what you do, Jeffrey Tubin is back on CNN, baby. Because when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first cigarette. When you're a and- white guy, friend of the head of CNN. Yeah. There's and a look, lot of women out there without blue check marks who are just fucking done. Well, there's a lot of women out there with, without blue check marks who I'm sure didn't masturbate on camera. They didn't. In front of their colleagues. And then, they didn't. you know, because they don't know and how. And they don't have Jeffrey Tubin jobs. No, they don't. And they never they, will. And they never will because Jeffrey Tubin is on the inside of the club. And when right. you're on the inside of the club, there's no getting rid of you. You will always, there will, the, the people on the inside of the club will fight and claw and scratch to get you back in your proper seat. Because if the cartel ever breaks, mm-hmm. if it turns out that you can actually lose your position inside the insider club for like being wrong or doing stupid shit or offending people or being horrible. That threatens everybody. That threatens everyone. Suddenly yeah. we're all, we're, wait a minute, we're all going to be measured. We're all going to be judged. We're all going to have to be held responsible you know, for our actions. Oh no. It kind of reminds me of the, the, I guess the Bill Murray bit at the beginning of Ghostbusters, you know, the private spec- the sector, they expect you to deliver, you know, <laughs> and, and suddenly thrusting these people into a marketplace where they can lose their jobs for doing their jobs badly is their worst nightmare. Right. So they all have to protect each other. And Jeffrey Tubin is a uh, beneficiary of that. The Trump Justice Department continued to pursue a CNN reporter's records for half a year after a federal judge said the argument for access to internal emails Mm -hmm. was speculative and unanchored in any facts. Yep. Banana Republic shit. The Keystone XL oil pipeline project was canceled after President Joe Biden re- revoked a key permit. Way to yeah, go, the Joe. company canceled it. Yeah. It's not worth it anymore. Yep. Keep fighting, folks. 75% of respondents from 12 nations said they were confident that Biden would do the right thing regarding world affairs, compared with 17% for Trump last year. Yeah. You know, a lot of those are shithole countries, Blue Gal. Shithole and, countries, you know. You know? But yep. I thought that racism started six months ago, Drift Glass. Well, and remember, shithole countries only count as three fifths of a country. So, <laughs> you know that you got to you got to factor that in. Uh, Joe Biden ended negotiations with a group of Republicans led by Shelley Moore Capito over infrastructure legislation, telling Capito that the latest GOP offer did not quote meet the essential needs of our country to restore our roads and bridges, prepare us for our clean energy future, and create jobs. Which, as an aside, is exactly the the markers that sort of markers that Barack Obama laid out for the Affordable Care Act. Mm-hmm. He told Republicans, "I don't care what we call it. I don't care who who passes it. You all put your name all over it, but it has Gotta to meet, meet these benchmarks." And and they just told them to go pound sand and fuck off, which is exactly what they're doing to Joe Biden. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said Biden was disappointed that Republicans had increased their proposed new investment by only 150 billion after he reduced his plan. By more than one trillion dollars, and now he's trying again with a bipartisan group of senators. Yeah, uh, and at some point he's going to have to say, "Oh, I guess we're done." Yep. Well, and that's this is the part where. Um, oh, and and what I mean by get done is we're going to have an infrastructure bill pass this right. summer. Right. Some some infrastructure have, bill have has no passed. no doubt of that. If we have to throw a trillion dollars at Joe Manchin's state, we'll do it. We're and, going to have an infrastructure bill. And pass. if we throw a trillion dollars at Joe Manchin's state, which we might have to do, then we also have to turn around. Joe Biden or someone in his administration has to very publicly say, where the fuck are those 10 Republicans you thought were reasonable there, uh, right. there Joe? Where are they? Name their names. I will go yeah. visit them in their home and, and mix them cocktails. Mm-hmm. But it's time to start humiliating Joe Manchin in public. 
mm-hmm. because Joe Manchin is a problem. And, yeah. you yeah. know, so anyway. And he's up for re-election. So yes, he is. The Biden administration will buy 500 million doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine to donate to 92 lower income countries and the African Union. I also understand they're going to give some to Japan because of the, the Olympics. That's right. Um, and it's getting a little desperate uh, time wise. They're, uh, they're going to have to cancel the Olympics. I think so. I just don't see but, how you get around that. And yeah. that's a shame. But you know what? It's the Olympics. It's, you know, um, it can be done at some other time. And I know there's a disappointment. And I know it's a terrible thing. Half a billion doses. Uh, and very, the, the Biden administration made it very clear there were no strings attached. There's no right. quid pro quo here. You know, we're this buying is not, them and we're giving them away. Yeah, yeah. Donald Trump would have sold them out of his trunk as Trump vaccines yep. for, at a profit for him personally. And had a wet T-shirt contest, as one yeah. person pointed out, to to who, which country is going to get the ones with the hottest beach babes. <laughs> and the reason we can do this now is the U.S. is averaging fewer than one million vaccines per day, which does in fact threaten Biden's goal of getting at least seventy percent of adults at least partially vaccinated by July fourth. At least 13 states have already vaccinated 75% of adults. An additional 15 states plus D.C. are over 60% and will likely reach Biden's goal. COVID-19 hospitalization rates, meanwhile, continue to rise. Guess where? Mm -hmm. In communities with low vaccination rates. And there are variants and there are situations where it's unpredictable what will happen if you have low vaccination rates. It's scary. And the communities where low vaccination rates, where vaccination rates are low, they believe uh, critical race theory is the problem. Is the number one problem the number facing problem America. The there's yes, a, there's right. an awfully big overlap between mm-hmm. those people and that problem. Two days after Joe Manchin vowed to block the federal election reform bill, Mitch McConnell said he would not support the bipartisan John Lewis Voting Rights Act, which Manchin and Republican Le- Senator Lisa Murkowski have urged lawmakers to reauthorize. I can only assume that Joe Manchin likes having... Mitch McConnell slapped him in the face with his dick every day because mm-hmm. there's no other reason other than he's just a buffoon or he's a fraud. Uh, Biden revoked and replaced three Trump executive orders that banned TikTok and WeChat from the United States. And you could hear the cheering come from the teenagers upstairs, upstairs. all the way across town. <laughs> the Biden administration moved to repeal a Trump era r- rule that ended federal protections for hundreds and thousands of streams and wetlands. Mm-hmm. The Biden administration determined that more than 3,900 children were separated from their families after the Trump administration implemented its zero tolerance policy. The report from the administration's Family Reunification Task Force also found that fewer than 60 families are now in the process of being reunited. Nearly 400 children have been repatriated to their country of origin. So we don't know. I'm. I We don't know where some of these kids are. We don't. We don't know what to do with them or where they are. Um, and and that was the point. The point of the previous administration the was, to, was be, to kidnap children as a deterrent. Was to be sadists. Yeah. To be absolute monstrous medieval sadists. And they mm-hmm. succeeded admirably and the base loved them for it. The Biden administration threatened to sue Texas if its Republican governor, Greg Abbott, moves forward with plans to close more than 50 shelters, housing about 4,000 migrant children. Abbott issued a disaster declaration last week, which directed a state agency to take all necessary steps to deny or discontinue licenses for child care facilities, sheltering migrant children within 90 days. Uh, He is also trying to build the wall, Mm -hmm. Greg Abbott, with state tax dollars uh, in Texas. And a whole bunch of people are pointing out that the power grid that just failed and they haven't forgotten that. Yeah. And if tax dollars are going to be spent on infrastructure, the wall is not where you need to spend them. Would you like to bet that within six months, the power grid failure in Texas will have been Biden's fault? It's Biden's fault. Mm -hmm. Um, 29% of Republican voters think it's likely that Donald Trump will be reinstated as president this year. By the Supreme Court, Drift Glass. By the Supreme, maybe a unanimous decision. You don't know. You know, Q is powerful. Trump is powerful. And he was. My pillow told me. Yeah, that's. The Coke Network pressured Joe Manchin to oppose Biden's key legislative items, including filibuster reform and the For the People Act. In a video series from Americans for Prosperity, a Coke super PAC, grassroots supporters were encouraged to push Manchin to, quote, reject Washington's partisan agenda, unquote, and oppose his party's own legislative priorities. Yep. 
by the way, the Poor People's Campaign is marching in West Virginia this week. So right. Tube can play at that game. I, I was listening to, I think it was Stuart Stevens, who was saying the, 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 there's no better test than can you get bipartisan support to investigate a mob that broke into your own workplace to murder you? Yeah, right. And if you can't get bipartisan support for that, Joe Manchin, what the hell are you even talking about? Yeah. And no, the yep. answer is the Koch brothers will be mad at me if I, you know, right. if I start talking, if I actually start behaving like a Democrat. Capitol Police had intelligence that Trump supporters planned to attack the Capitol at least two weeks before the January 6th insurrection. And they refused to act on those threats. Senate Republicans are blocking the confirmation for Biden's nominee to lead the federal personnel agency because of her support for abortion rights and critical race theory. Oh, my God. <laughs> And she pointed out that critical race theory, as she sees it, is that law school academic framework centered on the idea that racism is systemic. Oh, no. Can't have that. The delay on Kiran Ahuja's nomination to lead the Office of Personnel Management is being led by, surprise, Josh Hawley of Missouri. Yeah. I'd say of Missouri, ironically. He doesn't live in Missouri. His no. sister does. But he, he, but he, he's a senator from Missouri. Just one state over from the great state of Illinois, people. You don't have to live there. You can come across the river. We'll welcome you here. We got jobs. We got corn. We got pot that's legal. We got a governor with a billion dollars of fuck you money and a progressive yeah. mindset. Come on, get the hell out of there. It's a, it's a hellscape. Or, or rather, stay there. Have your friends come and visit you there. Move there and get the hell. Get Josh Hawley and the hell out of office. Like the hell out of office. He's got a good candidate running against him. Yes. Yeah. We already have two Democratic senators, so we don't need you. Just stay there. I stand corrected. <laughs> new, new audio reveals that Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani, America's mayor, pressured the Ukrainian government in 2019 to investigate baseless conspiracies about Joe Biden. Lordy, there are tapes. Yep, there always are. And they don't seem to make a damn bit of difference. Trump's chief of staff repeatedly pushed the Justice Department to investigate crackpot conspiracy theories about election fraud in five emails sent during the last week of December and early January. Mark Meadows asked Jeffrey Rosen, then the acting attorney general, to examine debunked claims of election fraud and insane conspiracies, including Italy Gate. Yeah. Which Rosen declined to do. This is during the lame duck, lame duck era. Right. This is after the election. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he he didn't lose. He obviously didn't lose. So there must have been a conspiracy. If When you reverse engineer everything from your stupid idea backwards, yeah. eventually you have to come up with a conspiracy that explains why your stupid idea didn't work. And that's that's the universe we live in now, which is a thousand stupid ideas. And they and they each sprout new branches and new limbs. You think there's bamboo in those ballots, Drift Glass? Yeah. Well, um, in local news... Um, alert listener Ten Grain, hey Ten Grain, uh, pointed out to us that Rodney Davis finally made it into the Politico playbook. The headline is Rodney Davis equals doofus. It appears that committee markups aren't only tedious for the poor CQ committee reporters covering every single one of them. We can say that because we've been there too. Apparently, Representative Garrett Graves, Republican of, of, of Louisiana, Got a little antsy at Wednesday's House Transportation Committee markup of the panel's $547 billion surface transportation bill and turned his boredom on his friend, Representative Rodney Davis, our Congress creature from Illinois. Our James Bacallus writes that five hours into the markup, Graves typed Rodney Davis equals doofus into a Word document and then angled the computer towards the camera so everyone could see it. That came after Graves praised Davis for, quote, finally coming up with a good idea when he offered an environmental permitting amendment. Bacallus reports that Graves noted that, quote, C and D plus grades on U.S. infrastructure gets in report cards released by groups like the American Society of Civil Engineers before adding, while Rodney Davis's parents would be ecstatic to see those types of grades, it's unacceptable for other Americans to be living under those conditions. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows Rodney Davis, as we call him, inert carbon Rodney. Yeah. He's just a cipher. He's just he's, a dumb... He doesn't have an original thought in his no, head. No. And no. every now and then he's, he steps a toe over the bipartisanship line because he, he's good at reading where he, he gets voted. His, he knows that 
in his district, every now and then he has to do something that appears bipartisan. Right. And he does. But he is still the guy who whipped votes to take health care away from my family and then mm-hmm. celebrated when he mm-hmm. did it and was congratulated for it. And who so desperately wants to be in the leadership of the fascist Republican Party. He will do anything to get there. So he's now, Well, and he's now using his congressional newsletter, email newsletter, to call Governor Pritzker a liar. Yeah. In the, in the subject line. Yeah. So he's he's either running for governor, which would be, I mean. Hilarious. I Hilarious. <laughs> Pritzker has a 57% approval rating right now in Illinois. Sure. Because of critical race theory. Critical but, race theory. That's it. Okay. Once we, once we <laughs> defeat that blue gal, that'll drop down to 52%. <laughs> I really want to see what what uh, Pritzker's fuck you money does if somebody comes up to him and says, but what about critical race theory? Yeah. yeah I, I think he has people that tackle people like that before they he reach does. him. He does. I think he has yeah. a, a department of idiots. Yeah. You know, send him over to there. Yeah. Well, when I worked at Columbia College, we had a man who we called affectionately the dean of crazy students. Yes. And, yes. His, and that job, was his job to right? sit in an office and very patiently listen to every batshit student who insisted that they were being picked on when they weren't and their parents lecture him on how my sal- my my dollars my money my tuition money pays your salary right and he just was sat there like buddha endlessly patient listening to mm-hmm. it all and eventually they'd run out of steam and he'd work out something but we knew that if someone crossed a certain threshold send him down to the dean of crazy students and mm-hmm. he will take care mm-hmm. of it and he did and he did a remarkable job and i hope he's doing well because yes god knows hey. i could not do that job <laughs> By the way, uh, there's a tweet from Bob Seska Uh-oh. from June 9th saying that the hacks, which we love as a TV show, uh, the finale was legendary. And he uh, then he had to correct that today going, oops, there were two more episodes. So we were not the only ones who thought that episode eight was the final episode. That's but right. But it's not. There's two more. So... Uh, Go watch you that show. You mean there's two more next week? No, 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 no. He thought the 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 one last the, the one last Thursday was the was last. Was the one. last one, yeah. and it's not. No, it's not. We, it went two ten more. more episodes. It was ten episodes. It was ten episodes, and you know and we you made that watch, mistake too. If, you're, if you have HBO Max, it's well worth watching. It's really, really, good really show. good. Really God, good it's show. Good. Um, it's sweet and it's well written, and it's and it's, we're watching an older show on Netflix too. We are called Travelers. Travelers. Which, uh, the the guy um, Tony the Democrat from. Postcards to Voters uh-huh. mentioned that he was watching, so I went and checked it out, and yeah. we started watching it. There's three seasons on Netflix that we haven't hadn't caught up with. Holy cats! And it's and so we really have like good. a summer a summer full of viewing ahead of us. It's yeah. really good. I was I I didn't I know I knew nothing about it. I um you know I'm a curmudgeon, so it's like if I didn't hear about it, it couldn't be any good, right? So <laughs> man, was I wrong? You know, occasionally yeah. I'll admit I'm it's wrong. It's really you know? not a bad show. No, travelers. It, it's travelers. It's it's really good. It's a it's a really interesting, not entirely new, but very. No, I would say I would say it is not new, and it is not necessarily unique in its plotting. No, it's it's, it's, a, it's a time travel show. It's There's a time nothing... travel show, but it's well done. And yeah. and where it, I thought it would zig, it zags. Yeah, and it I is think always that's fair. And you know what? The acting is really good. I mean, the the casting is 90% of everything. Uh, You'll know that if you watch Hacks. And the casting is just really top notch. So way to go, TV. Way to go. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Otto. Otto in this picture is sleeping in a clay pot. Because he blooms where he is planted. That's what he (laughs) does. That's what Otto does. And of course, Otto eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Otto at our Facebook page or website, Drift Glass. We're going to have to bring back crock blockers. I know, I know. I think that's are back. I, I think that that battle has been lost, Blue Gal. Although, <laughs> if if listeners to this podcast know one thing about me, it's that I will always choose the battle that's already over to fight the hardest <laughs> on the side of. I have no problem with uh, toddlers wearing Crocs or no. anyone who needs to rinse off their footwork if you're sure. out in the garden, if you're dealing with goat herding. Sure. You know, if you're doing something where you really need to just be able to take footwear off and run it under the hose 
and with little toddlers that have diaper accidents, you, plastic shoes are the way to go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as a fashion statement, um, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid we have some teens in this house that have jumped on the croc I, bandwagon. I, I can't. I can't live in that world, Blue Gal. <laughs> I just can't. I can take a lot. I can tolerate a lot, but that might just be the thing that pushes me over the edge. Anyhow, mm -hmm. go visit Otto at our Facebook page and website, and you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, prolifepodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise, hashtag fire to joy, jail to joy, get your joy out of there. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an iced, please, espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal, postal address, all of it, merch, everything. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. Thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, now that the state of Illinois has lifted virtually all pandemic restrictions, the Internet Kitties are looking forward to absolutely nothing changing for them in any way. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.